Hi everyone, the MCAT is hard, the MCAT's important, and in this video I'm going to be talking about how you should take your MCAT practice tests and go over them and review them, and what I think about third-party exams. So as many of you might be familiar with, you should take MCAT practice tests before you take the real exam. Because practice tests, they will help you get a feeling of how the exam will be before you jump into the real exam on test day. And it's a good idea to take quite a few before your actual tests. So that way you can get used to test-like conditions and be fully prepared for the endurance and the vigor that you will encounter on test day. So when it comes to taking practice tests, there are quite a few of third-party sites that provide them. A couple of them that I can name off the top of my head are Kaplan, Blueprint, Princeton Review, and Altius. I know there are a few other sites I have not listed that also offer them as well. I get students who ask me questions all the time what I think of these different practice tests. And to be honest, speaking from my experience as a 517 score, I think all of these third-party sites provide decently good practice tests, even though they might be harder than the real exam. Because to some extent, all of these sites, they do follow the logic that the AMC does test on real MCAT tests. And if you thoroughly review your mistakes on all of these third-party practice exams, you will get better at the real MCAT and you will find that the AAMC exams will be a breeze. Trust me. Please do not discount any third-party exam and take it any less seriously just because it is harder than the AAMC. I've known quite a few people who said, Ah, I don't need to review this question because it's probably not going to pop up on the real MCAT. However, I still think you should thoroughly investigate what it is that you did wrong on those wrong answers, even if it may not pop up on the real AMC. Because I'll tell you this, I do not know what you're going to get on your real MCAT exam. Nobody knows except the organization who makes the exam, which is the AMC. Only a few select people who design the exam for that test day know what's going to be on the exam. So I can't tell you if there's going to be 100 questions on magnetism. I mean, that does not gonna, that's not possible, guys. There's only 59 questions in chem biz. There's no way you can get 100 questions on magnetism on the MCAT. But I cannot tell you specifically what specific passages will be on the exam. You will need to base it off of percentages of high yield and low yield content, which honestly I should make in the subsequent video. Anyway, when it comes to doing practice tests, you need to take all of your practice tests very seriously. You need to take it as if you were taking a legitimate test. You need to clear your desk and take it under test-like conditions. So for example, when I took my 517 on March 12, 2022, I registered to take the exam at 8 a.m. sharp. So what I would do with all of my practice tests is that I would take it exactly at 8 a.m. sharp and I would take the entire time to do all of the sections and I would not take longer on my breaks than I was supposed to. I would strictly take 10 minutes for my first break and then 30 minutes for my lunch break, and then 10 minutes for my last break. And then when I did psych soch, I would see my score at the end. Around 2 or 3 p.m. in the afternoon. I forget the exact timing of it. But you want to take your practice tests as such to replicate test-like conditions. And the reason I say this is so that you can get used to the endurance of the exam. Because chances are, you are going to make dumb mistakes when you are taking your MCAT practice test. And that's totally okay. The whole point is to review it so that you don't make those dumb mistakes again. Another reason why you should take practice tests is not so much to get a score back. Because another big blunder I see from quite a few students is that they take a practice test and they often get discouraged because the score that they were expecting to get on that test was lower than what they were hoping for. You guys need to understand that when you take your first couple of practice tests, you're probably not going to do very well in the MCAT because you likely do not know how the exam works is a standardized test. You need to study the exam as a standardized test. You need to change your line of thinking and adapt your thinking to the explanation of the answer choice. Because if you adapt your thinking that way, you're going to start to crack the code of mastering the MCAT. And you need to reflect on your own personal mistakes and ask yourself, why is it that I got this question wrong? Did I not read the correct passage evidence? Did I misread the question? Did I not understand the question? You need to exactly pinpoint and diagnose what it is that you're doing wrong on these exams. You're studying this exam to become a doctor, right? Well, you need to already start practicing your physician skills of diagnosing 
where you went wrong when you picked the wrong answer on the MCAT. And you need to come up with a treatment for it. So when you take practice tests, you're not looking to get a specific score back. It's good if you see improvement, that's great. But the purpose of taking a practice test is for strictly the review process and for reviewing answers that you got wrong and why you missed them. And it can help give you very helpful feedback as to why you're missing questions on the exam. Could it be that you don't have enough content and you don't know what the function of the kidney is? That could be a possibility. Or perhaps, could it be that your line of reasoning is not in line with what the MCAT wants you to think? That is a very good possibility for why you're missing questions. Or could it also be that you're not reading the correct evidence in the passage and supporting your answer choice with that evidence? That is another reason why I see students get questions wrong. It happens. And you need to precisely diagnose why you're missing those questions. That is the purpose of taking an MCAT practice test. Because if you review it thoroughly and review it correctly, over time, you should see improvement. And that was how I was able to make a crazy 14 point jump. Those types of jumps are rare because most people do not know how to review a practice test correctly. They often see the score pop up on their browser and they get very discouraged and don't feel like reviewing the test. I've been there and that's a mistake I made. And I'm gonna tell you, it's not really worth it to close your computer and rage quit and not review your test. Because the whole point of taking a practice test is to review it. That's the whole point. So anyway, to sum it up, the point of taking practice tests is for the review process, not to get a score back. I also think that third-party exams are generally very good exams. I know that there is a war on Reddit debating about which third-party exam is the best. And I'm choosing not to participate in that war because I think that reviewing Whatever third-party exam you get is good practice to prepare for the real AAMC exams. And lastly, I want to say that the AAMC exams, those exams will give you a realistic score of what you're going to get on the MCAT. I would use the AAMC exams as exams in order to project what score you're going to get on the MCAT. Because I'll tell you this, when I took my AAMC exams for the MCAT, the scores that I got on AMC's three and four, they were very close to the score I got on my real test. I specifically got a 516 on my AMC three exam, and I got a 520 on my AMC four, and I got a 517 on my real test. I was super happy with the 517. Even though I got a 520 on my AMC four, I was nonetheless overblown when I got a 517, and I was just so happy. And I want you guys to experience those same feelings of happiness when you see your score back. The only way you can do it is to use practice tests as a tool to take personal accountability for why you are missing the questions you are missing. That is the purpose of practice tests. Okay, guys, I'm going to get off my soapbox and stop preaching. <laughs> but in the meantime, be sure to like this video and to subscribe to this channel because by doing so, I could be able to keep creating content like this for you guys and reveal all of my study secrets and strategies. I'm happy to do so, guys. And I'm willing to do this. I'm willing to cut a deal with you all. Once again, you guys seem to like these deals because every time I cut a deal in a video, it tends to get very good responses. So here's what I'm going to do. I will be willing to link one of my own personal review sheets, a blank review sheet of how I personally reviewed my wrong answers under the condition that this video gets 65 likes. I'm pushing the like limit up because I know that this video can do it. You guys can do it and you guys can do it on the real MCAT. In the meantime, I will see you later and I'll see you in the next video. The MCAT is hard. The MCAT's important. And I'm Josh, the MCAT tutor.